soon to be 27 year veteran of the middle school classroom. My name is Seth Burba. I'm a guest on the show today. This is my third time we figured out, so I'm really excited to be back. And you are listening to episode 14 of Middle School Madness, a podcast about teaching and things that are interesting to teachers. Hey, today on the show, what is the perfect metaphor or simile for the last 20 days of school? How do you unwind after a school year? And we're thinking both mentally and physically. And if June and July is one long Saturday, well, what does that make August? We are going to finish our show today with a Jeopardy style question category called What Are You Drinking? The Summer Edition. For this, we are going to bring in our special producer, the one and only Mixmaster McNaught, who is actually working the sound levels today, and he's going to join us uh, for the Jeopardy question. So for that, we like to say in middle school lingo, thanks, bro. If you would like to leave a comment, heck, email me at W-I-E-H-E-O-G at gmail.com with any questions or comments. Seth, we are down to that magical number, 9.5 days of school year left. Oh, right? man, we're under 10. We're under 10. When you look around the building, teachers are now looking exhausted. They're looking a little stressed. Mix Mac or McNaught is a little stressed today working it. So the finish line is near. So what is the perfect metaphor or simile for the last 20 days of school? I have an extended metaphor to describe this situation. I hope you can hang in there through it. I can hang in. Go for it, bro. Okay. Well, here's my metaphor. Um, it's like a high-speed train traveling across uh, you know, a mountainside, and I have a special pair of gloves on so I can stick to the top. And imagine like a Mission Impossible scene. I'm up there, and my gloves are magnetically, and I'm crawling across the train. And there's actually 20 cars <laughs> There's 20 cars because there, there's 20 days left. And I feel like as it's flying through the mountainside, I'm inching. You can imagine me inching one hand over the other, trying to make it to the front. And things are flying past me like signs as I go through tunnels and birds are flying past my face and debris, all kinds of nonsense is coming past me. You know, wind's blowing my face back. And I finally make it to the front of there. And as I get to that front cabin, I crawl down inside that engine and I pull the brake to a halt. And as the train heaves to a stop, I'm absolutely exhausted and I've completed my mission and I've stopped the train. And stopping the train is of course making it to summer break. But each one of those hands, hand over fist, hand over fist, that's how I feel, man. Like it's going slow in the moment, but I'm on a speeding train faster than I can even imagine trying to ride on the top of it. I mean, it's that is totally perfect because who doesn't feel that way? And, you know, I think of that Tom Cruise movie, like, you know, you're out there on the train, you've got the sticky gloves, but now the batteries stop working. <laughs> you know, it's the old, hey, the, why the batteries start? Well, you didn't charge your gloves, Mr. Verbo. Didn't you know to do that before you went on this adventure? Oh, man, I need better gloves. <laughs> and I love the metaphor of things going past your face. Things going past your face literally could be a student saying, uh, I didn't bring my computer today. I don't have my charger. What are we doing in class? You know, how do I get to teams? My favorite one could be like a sign that whips past your head. Hey, Mr. Verba, how do I minimize my screen? <laughs> it's May, man. It's May. <laughs> <laughs> right? And in slow motion, you're trying to say as the wind hits your face, you know, what have you done to minimize your screen? It's that little line. Yeah, yeah I, I, it's, it's been exhausting. And I think for most of uh, teachers, they would say the same thing. And it's going, it, the weird thing is, and where I, where I was thinking about this metaphor for me, it's how could it be going this fast? Like there's so much to do. There's a million things to do and we're traveling so fast, but at the same time, you know, it's like, it's slow. It's just like one hand at a time. It's like, you can't even say one step at a time. It's slower than that. It's, it's one hand at a time crawling, trying to make it to the front. And I'm amazed, like even in our classes, the, the TV production, like we're wrapping things up now. Like there's not a lot for us to do, but the level of teaching, you've got to teach, hey, welcome to class, you know, get everything out. You know, you're, you're putting on more of a show and putting so much energy into it. And organized, like oh, the amount God. of organization you need at this time of the year. And, you know, in, in my younger days, I remember thinking, okay, well, it's the end of the year. I'm just going to walk in there and we'll wing it. Right. Terrible decision. No. <laughs> Don't do that. 
this is the time of the year where you need to be ultra organized and really have a plan of exactly what you're going to say and how you're going to do it. And um, that's the only way that I think you can make it through each and every day. And to the, you know, I like to the success of our district, you know, we took the whole building, did a community service day. So we had to plan for that. And then the seventh grade teams all do like a stream day. So we've got a plan for that. The one team went and did an Olympic day. You got a plan for that. I found out today there's another team that's going uh, to the local amusement park, Kennywood. I didn't know about that. So there goes another third of a class. So not only are you trying to climb up the train, like I said, the obstacles that keep getting in your way to get to the top of the train just to stop the darn thing. I mean, it's, it's incredible how um, this time of the year – how actually few days you sit in a classroom and instruct like what I think what most people would imagine school looks like, mm -hmm. right? Like teacher giving instruction, students doing work, f finishing a project, turning things in. Like there's actually, there's very few of those days in May, yet y you're more tired than ever. Yeah. Yeah. You're, yeah. You're teaching. I like what you said. Your teaching is not instruction. Like I'm not instructing every day. We've given them a set of skills. Now we're just doing projects to work on those set of skills, but you got to do it at such an energy level of humor, patience, kindness, rudeness, right? You know, you can look at a kid and be like, uh, Hey, as I try to inch towards the line, you know, why didn't you do this in class? And it's exhausting. Five to 10 minute increments, right? You better not do anything for more than five to 10 minutes or you oh, yeah. will lose them. You will lose them. Totally lose them. Well, this is great because my metaphor is strangely very similar to yours in that I thought if I took my washer and I stuck my washer at the first car of a roller coaster and I put my washer on spin cycle, right? <laughs> so I'm in the first seat of a roller coaster, the washer is in constant spin cycle. And if you've ever done the Hulk roller coaster at Universal, where you oh, start to go uphill, yeah. you get halfway up and then it shoots you off with magnets and then you go into like a cobra turn and whatever. And I'm like, that's the end of school. You're constantly spinning. The course is constantly changing, right? It's thrilling and exhausting. And just when you think you get to the end, nope, the ride's going to start over again because you got 20 more days left. And then you do this. And then when the ride's done, like you said, you get to the front of the car, finally you hit the last day. I step off the roller coaster. Well, now my front seat's been spinning around. I've gone upside down three times. In a, you know, and I just picture, right, tip to the left, tip to the right. Tip to lie, you know. And I love our secretary actually pulled out a, a photograph of you. Uh, so I'll put a little plug in, but uh, Mr. Wea put a photograph of um. him at the beginning of the year and then the end of the year. And uh, the end of the year had his hair standing out all crazy. And, you know, she used that one at about 20 days left. And uh, that's really telling. Yeah, you just feel kind of... Uh, all over the place in pieces. I think our personal lives too. There's like another piece of it for, I think for a lot of us that have families, like May's also busy as a parent. So I, there's this combination of if you're a parent and a teacher, which so many of us are, that it's also a busy time at home combined with a busy time at work. And it's actually busy in a lot of the same ways. It's so busy. I mean, this week, you and I were both saying, you know, we've got five days. We're coming up on the holiday weekend. Every day after school this week, I have something planned. I mean, as soon as this is over, right, I've got something to do. Uh, tomorrow is the retirement ceremony or a um, seminar for how to retire. I'm going to that. Okay. But then I still have something to do after that. Friday, we have a scouting activity. I mean, that's just the way it is. And the joke was, I said to somebody, I would like to retire and think that that May is not going to be busy. But I got a feeling I'm going to retire. Just discover, no, no, May's always busy, right? <laughs> May's, Whatever you're doing. It's one of those months. But it is, it is really, it is really crazy. And I can't remember the name of the math teacher we had a couple years back, but she told this great story that as soon as school was over, she jumped in, in her husband's Corvette, like he had just bought like a brand new Corvette. Nice. Right? And they drove out to South Dakota like the day after school. Oh, that would have been exciting except halfway out there, she begins to develop hives, like is itching, feels horrible. And so they, so they went to like a miscellaneous ER room out in the country and they couldn't find anything wrong with her. So they literally drove back home, had to scrap this whole thing. And she was like, the moment I got home, 
It's the moment it all went away. And I was like, yeah, because you hit the end of the school year and your body's like, uh, you're so jazzed up. And then you're trying to relax in a car. She couldn't relax at all. There oh was no goodness. buffer time. And her body was like, what are you doing? Produced a hive, turned around, came home. Boom. Instantly, the hives went away. That's she goes, terrifying. She goes, I just, I just needed to relax. Yeah. To sit down. Which, of course, brings us to how do we as teachers unwind from a school year? We're shaking. We've walked. We, we got our Mission Impossible gloves on. How do we do it mentally and physically? How are you going to do it this summer? How will you unwind? Well, I personally, I have a, I have a hard time sitting still, so I know that that's what I should do. I mean, that's a, a fantastic story. It, I mean, it makes sense that sometimes you just actually just need to sit still. And I, I try to do that. I guess I do it in some different ways. I know my family, like, what I try to do immediately is finally give my family time that I haven't been able to especially over the month of May. And so uh, what does that include? So it's not really like sitting still. We go on usually a, like some type of camping trip. Uh, we fish, those kind of things. And it's, I think the, the thing that really, you know, to relate back to our cell phone topic is it gives us a chance to unplug and sit around a campfire together um, to have conversations uh, be outside with nature. So I don't know. Those, those are the things that seem to refresh me. And by the end of June, I, I, I do feel refreshed. You know, I, I feel like I've shaken off the, the May craziness. It's hard to shake it off. I know what we like to do is, you know, one, you got to find a new, a new routine. You've been in the same routine for 180 days. I love just make waking up, making the coffee, sitting in my backyard and watching the birds. You give me an hour into that with a with a package of brown sugar cinnamon pop tarts, it's really really good. But then we've got to go and, and we begin to do things, and it's the fun things, like you said. You know, normally with scouts, I would go and do like a week long adventure with them. That really helps because then you're outdoors every day. You've got like a similar purpose. Usually by the end of June, we'll head to the beach sometime in July, and there's something about going to the beach, which is the same feeling every year. It's seeing something bigger. And more powerful than me, where you just go, wow. Like, I've never gotten tired of seeing that. It is just, and it, and it, and it relaxes me. And like I said, there's no schedule every day. You can stay up to, and watch, you know, the Milky Way appear. You can sleep in, get up early, go get coffee, you know, film a sunset. But that brings you into, like, the middle of July. And, and it, it takes a while. I think it takes about four weeks, like you said, to hit July and begin to now you begin to feel relaxed. Yeah, there's something about it for me where the, you were talking about the different routine and that kind of sparked the memory. You know, one of the things that I change is what I normally jam into an evening. So like, for example, like trying to work out or trying to take a run or something like that for myself where I know it's important to do that. Now I have the morning to do that. You know, so I get on this schedule that changes and I'm able to start my day with, uh, you know, a cup of coffee and chilling for a minute, but then to the gym, take a run something that's physically active that I could do um, at a better time of the day for myself instead of when I'm already exhausted at the end of the day. So that switch of routine, it takes a second, but um, that helps me too. You know, um, I, it's something I'm a little jealous, I guess, of the business people in the world that start at nine where yeah. we start so early in the morning, um, you know, at seven o'clock, you know, kind of start time really for us when it comes to, you know, getting your brain engaged. I, I can't get myself up at 3.30 in the morning to start working out. So I am jealous of that sometimes. And I love that change of routine, that summer routine where you can be done working out and have your day going and devote your time to your family. And, and it all happens at like by nine o'clock. Right. All, I've already done all the things that I kind of wanted to do. And I'm like ready to go by nine o'clock to spend some time with my family. Yeah, it I is, love that. It is great because... I love working out in the summer, especially because one, I can probably do it every day or every other day. And eventually, as one of my son's cross country coaches would say, you feel like you're the guy on top of the world making the world rotate, as in your runs would become effortless because now you don't have the stress of school dragging you down. You're not getting up before work to run. You're not running after you've worked a full day. You literally feel rested every day. And that turnover in my legs becomes very natural. 
And I was, you know, doing like six miles would be, be relaxing because you're not like huffing and puffing. There's not this stress to get out there. And it takes about four weeks to, to kind of get to that level which is a while, and it is a lot of running or, or biking or whatever the heck I do. There's there's more time to get dinner ready. There's more time to do the dishes after dinner. There's more time. It, it changes things for yeah. you. Yeah. And I, I do think it's really necessary in our profession. I think you and I have talked about there have been talks, and I know different states do it differently, but it would be maybe – beneficial to not have such a long summer and, and maybe split that up throughout the year so you could have this feeling of summer more often. Right. I, I You and I have talked about this on the side, but, you know, man, I could use uh, this type of change of routine in, you know, uh, November. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, I really could. And then go back to work a couple of weeks later. You know? I couldn't imagine that. That would be pretty awesome, I think. I like to, the one thing I will add in there is I don't, I read a lot of news articles during the school year, which I've got to get away from, you know, maybe I'll make a new year's resolution or maybe I won't, but I do like to pick up trashy fiction. You know, <laughs> I don't mind a Stephen King book, right? You know, go to the airport, buy whatever is in the top 10 and, and just read it. It is fun to fall into a book, you know, cause there's nothing serious about it. It takes you away. I love sitting in a beach chair. I sit and just turning, turning pages. I still like to physically hold a book. I don't, I've tried eBooks, but there's no fun. One, you can't brag about what eBook you're wearing when no one can see what you're reading. Yeah. And there's that satisfaction of just cracking that binder, you know, and, and that always, even if I get detective fiction is one of my favorites, any kind of detective fiction where you know where it's going or you think you do, I just, I, that just relaxes my head because there's not that constant drive of what am I doing tomorrow? First period, second period, third period, how am I organizing? It all eventually fades away until it feels like, especially in the end of July, it feels like every day is a Saturday. Yep. And when you get there, that's a great feeling. Oh, man. I end up reading. Uh, I do a little bit of reading in the summer, maybe not quite as much as you do. Um, I, I enjoy <laughs> This is almost embarrassing to admit, but I'll admit it. I end up reading what my daughters are reading sometimes. So Perfect. She's a, she's a pretty good reader, uh, my 13-year-old. And, but she's reading young, uh, you know, young to young adult fiction. Oh yeah. And it's usually kind of a hit. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of financial backing in that, that, <laughs> that area. A lot of those are end up, end up being movies, yes. which is kind of exciting. And then we can watch the movie together. So over the past, you know, I don't know, a couple of years, I end up reading that, which is, it, it, it takes, it requires no real thinking for me. It no. requires no real effort. It's just more enjoyment, which is, you know, kind of fun. And they, they tend to be smaller. So when my kids yeah. were going through the middle school phase, um, it was great to pick up their books because, you know, you could devour them in several days, yes. which was always great. I mean, I read Hatchet, literally about a hatchet. Uh, uh, Gordon Coleman, I think, was a guy. I read a whole bunch of him. Um, it was great stuff. It was great. So we've got June and July, as my, and this is what my dad would say. My dad would say that June and July is one long Saturday. <laughs> and he was 100% correct. When, when you had reached kind of the, the epitome or the, or the culmination of like relaxedness, every day felt like a Saturday and it was great because you lose time, you lose days of the week. My gosh, thinking about it now, I think I'm smiling from ear to ear like, oh, soon, soon that feeling will come. And then- a long Saturday. And then August. <laughs> what happens in August? I don't want to talk about it. I, I guess we got to talk about it. But it happens every year. And it's the fun. I feel like a migrating bird in August. I feel horrible. Yeah. You know what? It's, it's hot outside. So it's tricking you. And yet you have this looming storm that's on its way. Yes. I wake up August 1st and you, you do, you're like, wait a minute. It still feels like August. The birds sound like August, but there's something in the back of my head that says school is coming. And you're like, really? Come on. I got three more weeks. I should at least be relaxed. Doesn't happen though. And it's crazy because you and I both coach soccer and it's like, well, let me look at the calendar. And you're like, no, not the calendar. 
<laughs> I got to now start thinking about planning. Here comes the organization comes back in. Got to bring the family back in. You know, next thing you know, <clears throat> well, I, maybe I should probably go to bed a little earlier, wake up, do some things for school, even though I'm, you know, probably don't need to. But if I get them out of my head, then I'll sleep better. And you're only on August 2nd. <laughs> no, I mean, I, you, you made the metaphor, I guess, at, uh, June and July are like a giant Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. It, it does. All of August feels like a Sunday night. That's what it feels like to me. Like you're and. and Here's the thing, the reality of it is I do a lot of fun things on Sunday nights. I often do things that are a little bit more relaxed. Like I sit around a campfire. I have, I, you know, I, I maybe have one beer, but you're not going to have a bunch no. because you have that feeling no, of, I feeling. got to get up for work. And that's what it feels like in August. Like you can't have too much fun no, you can't. in August because you got to get back to work soon. <laughs> yeah, it does. It has that Sunday night feeling to it. And I just think of all the veteran teachers out there that are probably hopefully nodding their heads going, yeah, August is crazy. Because I would think every year I want to be like, no, not this August. Like this will be the August where I've got 26 years under my belt. Clearly, August will come and I'll be like, no, I'm good. I know what I'm doing the first day. And it never happens, right? The back of your head just starts thinking, drives me out of my mind. I'll, be, I'll make trips to Walmart in August and like purchase things for my classroom. That's a devastating feeling. <laughs> I have to buy new signs for the wall or new. I, hey, what are the kids into now? LED lights that oh, yeah. surround the corners of my classroom. <laughs> so I'm going and investing some money in some new LED lights. I just love, it's like in the fall, right? In the fall, you've got your routine. It's October. And you see that very first Christmas commercial. And you're like, why are they doing Christmas commercials? It's October. It's the end of July or maybe the middle of July. And you see that first brightly colored fluorescent ad with like the super happy kids jumping around saying, I can't wait to go back to school because I get a backpack and new clothes. And I'm just like, I don't like seeing you. Why are they showing me a back to school ad in July? I just got out. Yep. The back, <laughs> the back to school signs. Oh. <laughs> And then we started all over again. But hey, before we start it all over again, you know it is now time to play the Jeopardy style of what are you drinking? This is the summer edition. So to do this, we're gonna bring in we're gonna bring in our producer, Kurt McNaught. Kurt is also known in the hallways here of the middle school as Mixmaster McNaught. Right. Mixmaster and I were literally hide the same year. We have been hanging out together. We have written several great songs together. Uh, the one of that we did, we, we did a rap called uh, My School, <laughs> which yes. was literally about my school. It was horrible, oh, yeah. but we had to start somewhere. And should people go on YouTube, you could also catch out my rap called The Eight Basic Camera Angles. I right? like it. Right? And it, was, and it was great. Okay, so here's how this worked. Kurt, uh, only because you're awesome, you guys, you can go first, right? Okay. Uh, the category is what is you drinking? What are you drinking? Jeopardy. Right. We have a hundred dollar category, 200, 300, 400, and of course, 500. There is no daily double. So if you've never watched the show, which you told me before the show, you doesn't matter. All right. right. Well, well, I know Jeopardy. It's you do know. we need to answer in the form of a question. Yes, okay. well, uh, yes you do. Yes, okay. you do. And you'll 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 see this. I wrote these questions myself. Right. I went to the um, mixology department. That calm. I don't even know where I went, but I, I was able. I was able to formulate questions. So we do have a bell. So put your hands close. Well, no, Kurt goes first. So Kurt, here we go. Are you ready? Um, I got a uh, yeah. ring. Could have got a bell that rang. We got a bell. All right. All right. So here we go. Uh, for one hundred points or dollars, we'll we'll pay you in dollars. All right, Kurt. One hundred dollars. This cocktail originates in Puerto Rico and has a name that translates as. Strained pineapple. What are you drinking? Kurt, what are you drinking? Kurt, for 100 points. What is... <laughs> I'm sorry. The look on your face. Okay, I have right. no I... idea. Can, can I... Okay. I can okay. think. Okay. Uh, Seth, uh, over to you. This cocktail originates in Puerto Rico has a name that translates as strained pineapple. 
A pina colada? That is correct. (laughs) I thought it was a beer. (laughs) That was easy. Uh, well, you can that's... tell you can tell it's May. Oh, you can tell geez. it's May. Okay, so somewhere on a paper. All right, so it looks like under the category of S, you have 100. All right, so here you go. Uh, for 200 points, Seth. All right. I'm very excited. Havana, Cuba is often referred to as the birthplace of this cocktail, whose core ingredients include white rum, lime juice, and mint. What are you drinking? What is... <laughs> this bell's really throwing us off. Uh, what is a mint julep? Oh, I'm sorry. That is not the correct answer. Kurt, over to you. Havana, Cuba is often referred to as the birthplace of this cocktail, whose core ingredients include white rum, lime juice, and mint. And this is 200? This should be like a thousand. <laughs> you can't argue <laughs> with the host of the Jeopardy show. What is? Uh, no idea. I know. The correct answer is what is a mojito? Never heard of it. Bad. Well, that's okay. I've never heard of it. <laughs> you guys have never heard of a mojito? Yes, yes I've heard know. of it. Yes, okay. I've heard of it. All right, uh, Seth, you're <clears throat> still up for 300 okay. points. Right? I mean, it's probably good that maybe as teachers we're That's not right. excellent at mixed drinks. Uh, yes. I'm just going to accept your offer and say <laughs> yes. Okay. I'm sure thousands of our listeners be like, oh, those guys should know. I know. That was, I, uh, that was a mojito. mojito. I mean, as soon as he said lime, I was like- My I wife would actually be super mad at me. She drinks mojitos. And you didn't know that? I, I should have oh, known. I should have known. Here I we got go. mixed up. All right, Seth, you've got 300 on the board. Kurt? Zero. Zero. Here we go. For 300 points, according to the International Bartenders Association, <clears throat> also known as the IBA, why, oh my God, rye whiskey, sweet red vermouth, and a dash of Augustura bitters are the ingredients in what cocktail, which is named for a New York City borough? Seth. What is old fashioned? Cosmopolitan. <laughs> What is the cosmopolitan? No, I no. <laughs> oh my god. Which is named for a New York City borough. What is Brooklyn? <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Manhattan. Hey Kurt, you are have taken the lead. <laughs> At least I'm on the board. There you go. Kurt has 300. <laughs> yes, the correct answer is what is a Manhattan? Kurt, you are now in control. 400. Oh man. $400 up for grabs. What Y beer company is the oldest operating company in the U.S. originating in Pottsville, PA in 1829? Their products include an original black and tan as well as flight. Who is or what is Yingling? <sighs> Kurt, we knew that you one. are we're 100% from, correct. We're from Pennsylvania. We know that well, one. That's why. I didn't know it was the oldest. My, oh, wait, by the research. Yes, according to my research, that, that is the oldest one out there. Okay. Kurt, you have the lead. This is for 500 points. Now, yeah, there's really no way for Seth to win, but it doesn't really matter. This is like who's line, right? And the points don't matter. Okay, here you go. Last category. <laughs> <laughs> for 500, you give one to your teacher. Sarlati is a cocktail widely drunk in Poland, which features vodka as well as the juice of which non-citrus fruit? I'll read it one more time because it's kind of, you got you to pay attention. Give one to your teacher. This is called a Sarloka, is a cocktail widely drunk in Poland, which features vodka as well as the juice of which non-citrus fruit? Seth has chimed in first. Seth? Uh, An apple. (laughs) You are 100% correct. (laughs) Yeah, I've never heard of the drink. But I feel like a teacher needs an apple. But I figured, yeah, for 500 points, I like this one the best. I was going to say Honeycrisp Apple, but maybe that's just my favorite. Dude, that would be a very tasty drink, right? With like some kind of Honeycrisp. A liqueur, maybe we have in there. Yeah, I, well, it starts out with give one, give one to your teacher. Well, so yeah, well, I, it doesn't matter. The points don't matter, guys. That was really fun. You guys are awesome to come on the show, right? 
So here we go. As they say, <laughs> Mixmaster McNaught, there is the sound of the bell. It is time to shut down the smart board, turn off the lights, and leave the greatest playground in the world, your classroom. Kurt, so glad you could come in and help us out on the show today. Thanks for having me. Right, Seth, you are always welcome back. Thank right? you. Thanks for having me. Man. Great to have you two knuckleheads on the show. It looks like we all need a break from a very busy and stressful stressful school yeah, year as we as we climb our way yeah, yeah. up the 20 cars of the tree <laughs> right everybody out there thank you so much for listening enjoy your summer thanks for everybody for helping me complete season one of middle school madness and we will see you in the hallway enjoy your summer everybody there we go <laughs> you guys are you that's guys. it you guys are great. Dude, I'm so really bad with next week. That is so funny. I had... <laughs>